Bonjour and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 161, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. <clears throat> We're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi, everyone. Hi, Marwa. Great to have you uh, with me again today, or to be with you today. Um, so, Marwa, we've, uh, we don't often take requests from, uh, from the, the, the comments, but sometimes we do. Um, and today, uh, I'm going to address a request that we got uh, a few shows back to talk more about checksums and hashing and that kind of thing. Um, we've had a few episodes that, that, that talk about this and, and reference it, but, but this episode's really going to be digging deep into, you know, checksums and why we use checksums and what they're all about and, and, and all that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, I'm going to lead this one and ask for you to tell me to slow down or to re to to restate something because I've been doing this kind of thing. I'm going to call it hacking for best lack of a better word, but I've been doing this kind of thing since about 1981, which is before you were born. Am I right? Yes, you're right. <laughs> so, so I, I, I sometimes just, you know, breeze through things, but I think it's important to, um, to kind of slow down. Hopefully we'll get it done in just five minutes. Um, but I'm gonna set up our example first. So I, on my screen, I have, let's see, um, I have, oop, uh, I have uh, this, this form. And if you go out on the internet and you Google how to add a delete button uh, to uh, a, a, a report like this, you're gonna get lots and lots of, uh, of hits. And they're going to tell you ways to do it, and none of them consider uh, consider the vulnerability, the security vulnerability. Save one. I I know of one. It's actually very good. I, I'm I'm tempted to talk about this particular blog post that that talks about using a checksum to to um, to secure this, but it ha it it still has a flaw. Um, and so we're going to go. I'm going to I'm not going to talk about it just because it. It also has a flaw, and I don't want to call out a flaw on another blog post, but there is a good, it's very good, save one little flaw, and, and maybe I should talk about it. But I, I'm, going to, I'm going to walk through step by step um, what the issue is in this, and then we'll, we'll show how to solve it. But the, the first thing is this. What, what often happens is you create a link like this, and I'm just going to inspect it. And somewhere in here, you have the, the, the row ID, the, the primary key. So we have this five. This is row five, the category ID. And if I click on that, it should delete row five. And then what you have is you have a dynamic action that somehow passes back that five, usually as a hidden item or something like that. And that dynamic action will delete the row. So I'm just gonna show that really quickly that we have, um, we have this uh, right here, um, our, our um, column has a delete button. It, it has a link and it's got this category ID, and then we have a hash uh, uh, server-side code that ultimately would delete the row. That's the way it would work. We pass that back. What we've done is we've added a hash value. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. And so that's a big piece of it right there is this hash value. So returning here, I'm going to turn on my timer now. The idea is to make sure that this is safe. And so I'm going to go ahead and click my timer and say, so so we've added a hash value to it and i'm going to get back to that and talk about that more in a minute but marwa you know if you don't write your own code if you just like apex handle this apex takes care of it all 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 the time if i just use the wizard to create a form and a report right here what's going to happen when i click on this link you will notice that there is a checksum actually right it's that checksum right there and I can tell you it ends in 7KAW, right? 7KAW. And I want to point something else out. If I do the exact same thing, I create a different page, exactly the same thing, same report, same you know, for a form on a different page. I'm going to a form on a different page and I click on this, same row, I get a different checksum, right? And this Even is though bo both pages are with the same type and it's the same row, you have a yeah, different checksum. Row. I have a different checksum. That's exactly right. And if I inspect this page, I'm going to find that there's a hidden item on this page, and that hidden item is the um, is the empno. So 
empno. And that, that has a checksum. And I'm going to tell you this checksum for empno value one is different than the checksum if I go to this other page, right? If I go to this page and I do the same thing, I'm going to get a different checksum. So Apex does not reuse checksums throughout the application. When you go to a particular page, that checksum is unique to that page. It's unique to that, that item, right? And that's really key because if all I do back here on my page, right here, if my checksum is not unique to this page, it could show up someplace else in the application. So if I inspect this right here and I see that row number five has a particular checksum, if I then go to a different page, different report, completely different, I'm going to see that this checksum could match the other one if I don't do anything special, right? So if I come back to my, my, my home page and I look at the way I create that checksum, if all I do is pass to Apex Util get hash, if I just pass this category ID, it's just a checksum for the number five or the number six or whatever it might be. So where's the vulnerability? The vulnerability is when you are not allowed to process data number six, if you're not allowed to process data number six, but then you can get that checksum from a different page and then come back here right. and use it. Exactly. I could inspect this page, get the checksum for number six. I can come back up here. I could come here, inspect this, put a six in here. So change this to a six change this to that checksum. And now, well, I'm not going to get all the way through it, but now if I submit this, this would actually work. So I need to be careful that I don't reuse any of the hashes, right? I need my hash to be unique to my page. Um, okay, so let's go back here. So the way to do that is instead of just doing this cat ID, right? I want to pass in two things to the get, the get hash. I want to pass in both the cat ID and some unique string that I'll never use in any other report, never use anywhere else, except when I'm checking to see that this hash is valid, right? So instead of using this vulnerable technique, I'm going to use a technique where I put this string in here. I'm using P1 cat ID. I could, if I had two reports on this page, I would want to make sure that I, I use a different string just to make sure that everything is there. So now if I do that, and instead of using the, vulner the vulnerable one here, if I just use hash value, this will always require it to be unique to this page. And then when I process my server side code, I need to make sure that I use the same technique. I'm going to use P1 cat ID, the item I'm passing in, along with this unique string. And it needs to be unique every time you use it. It's not just need unique one time in your application. Every page, everywhere you use this, it needs to be unique. And that's the difference. That's the vulnerability of the particular blog post I was talking about. He, in that blog post, he uses a single string and it doesn't change for every place it's used, which means that number could show up someplace else. Exactly. Um, so. Not wow. only you have to provide a checksum, but you need to be careful to make it unique, right? Yes. Um, so I encourage folks um, uh, to, to look at some of the other ones we've talked about um, on this topic and, and see what they think. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot we've talked about, but I think that this particular utility, apexutil.gethash, is great. And one of the things that makes it nice is it takes this Apex Varkar 2 and you can pass in multiple things and you need to make sure you do that. Um, we do have a question here from Bra uh, Brian. Uh, would there be every, ever be a practical application of passing in a random number of timestamp when generating uh, checksums? I actually, I don't think so um, because you need to be able to check it again when you submit it in. So, um, so a, a random number, so a couple of things. This utility, Apex Util Get Hash, actually uses underlying session state inform session information. It uses the salt of your workspace. It uses your session ID. So your session 
session A and session B will never get the same hash value. You'll never get the same hash value between two sessions. The, the only vulnerability here is in the same session that a user, uh, a nefarious user uh, like myself, um, might might look to use that that same checksum from a different page over here. And and let me tell you, let me tell you that this happens, right? This is not. This is not a theoretical problem. This absolutely happens and I can guarantee it. Um, a unique salt per page, again, not really all that interesting because all you need is something unique. You could just use the page number. It doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be a unique salt per page. Nobody can regenerate this. This is only because you've got that. If you wanted to, you could just use the, the page number here. You could say, um, you know, page uh, uh, app page ID. But the problem if you do this at page ID, if you have two of these, if you need two of these on the same page, you, you could potentially have this problem as well. That's why I do recommend that you always put in a unique, a unique string, whatever it might be, but you want to put in a, a, an additional value here that is absolutely unique for this usage for this region for this item, whatever it is that you might be doing. Um, Rich says, could you have a, a checksum from one session and then use it in another session? Ah, no, you can't. Absolutely not. When you use apex uh, util.get hash, if you just pass in the first parameter, this is one parameter. If you just pass in the first parameter, it will be unique to your session. There is a second parameter that you can pass in. If you pass in the second parameter, then it's not unique across sessions. Um, the second parameter, I don't remember what it is, but it's something like- It's p salt and it's a boolean. Uh, Thank you. Peace salt. Thanks. <laughs> Peace salt. It's a Boolean. And if you, if you, if you leave it null, the default is that it's unique to your session. If you put in the other value, I don't know, true or false, but um, it, it's not unique to your session. It can be reused. So that's Rich's uh, question. Um, I'm happy to ask, answer other questions people might have about this, but this, again, you know, I, I, I do believe that some applications don't need this. You don't, you don't need to be that concerned with some applications. You've written it for yourself or you, you have a really small department or something like that. But if you're writing this application, your application for anything that's, that's, that, that has issues, um, you know, I, I often say I, uh, all of my stories are loosely based on events that never actually occurred. Um, and I'm going to repeat that now. Uh, all my stories are loosely based on events that never actually occurred. But I can say that I know of, for example, students that have gotten um, into classes uh, that were closed because they have too many students in them or it was too late to register for them um, by doing this kind of thing in a student information system, for example. Um, I know of people that have ordered products that weren't supposed to be able to be ordered because of this kind of thing. I know many years ago, I'm trying to remember, it was like a PS3 or something, um, uh, was the, the hot Christmas present of the year. And on a, a particular website, if you found exactly what we're talking about now, on a different page, you could find the checksum for that item, but you couldn't order it. But on a different page, you could inject it and you could get it, uh, get it in. So wow. this is this really happens this is not uh it's not just some theoretical kind of thing um, yes so eventually at least we have to be aware of those security issues yes yes i mean there is another approach instead of a checksum you could for example just make sure that that you know you could put the same where clause on here that you might have on the other thing but it becomes very very complicated the checksum is if you don't see the row you, and you don't have the checksum, it's just always going to be there. But there, there is the the uh, other option that you just make sure that you don't allow anything to happen in your PL SQL code that you didn't allow um, in the, uh, uh, let me cancel that, that you didn't allow in the query itself. For example, here, you could just, um, you could just apply this simple where clause, right? But but often that where clause is much more complicated and, and it's based upon right. data and you know, it can be all kinds of crazy things, which is where this, this checksum comes into play and which is why Apex itself uses a checksum in that same way. Um, right. Right. 
All right. Well, um, Marwa, that was perhaps uh, not our normal approach to these things, but uh, there we go. That's that's more than anybody probably wants to know about a checksum or a, a, a hashing and all that. Um, so today I have a brief history lesson. Um, and so do you know, Marwa, when the first known sort of hacking incident took place approximately? I used to know guys. that, but I forgot. Uh, well, okay. And this may not be the one you were thinking of, but in 1834, um, some couple of French brothers uh, hacked the French telegraph system. Um, <laughs> wow. What, the, what they did was they bribed a telegraph operator when they were sending news, government news uh, across the telegraph that wouldn't, wasn't going to be released for uh, a few hours about the financial markets, they bribed the telegraph operator to add in an extra character. And that character would either indicate that the market had gone up or gone down. And then the character after that was a backspace to say to, say to the receiving operator, oh, ignore that one. So they might you know, they would, they would have this long message, but the, on the receiving side, the people would never see that extra character because the receiving operator would, would just delete it. So they would get, you know, a message that said, you know, the weather in Paris is beautiful. And then an extra letter, you know, maybe I don't remember what the letter was, but a U for up and a backspace. So they wouldn't put that on there. And it was just, you know, the message would be the weather in Paris is beautiful, but, um, but the, the brothers, would actually spy on the actual telegraph, you know, the Morse code um, lever, and they could see it through a window, right? And they knew that the extra character had come in. So they knew if the markets had gone up or gone down and they could buy and sell stock. Um, oh, wow. Wow, that's hacking, really. Right, that's hacking. Nasty. So, so this has been going on a long time. And guess what? The brothers weren't prosecuted because there was they no weren't. law against it. There was no law against it in those days. There was no law against hacking a, you know, a, a, a data <gasps> network. Nobody even thought to have a law about it. So when it was found out, there was no law, they couldn't be prosecuted. Oh, wow. All right. That's the first hacking incident, that's, I think. That, 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 at least that I'm aware of. There, you know, maybe there's something else, but that's the first one that I'm aware of. So, um, so it's been going on for uh, 190 years. Uh, 190, right. Yeah, so um, there we go. All right, well, do uh, you have anything else, Marwa, for everybody? Well, it's always nice to check some, at least think of them, and yes, thank you. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna repeat what you said because I think that's an important point. It's about changing the, your mindset. Right. Anytime you write your own code, you need to think about this kind of thing. If you've just clicked through and let Apex take care of it, you're probably safe. Every time you write a line of code, you need to think about this. So, yes. thank you, Marwa. That's key. All right. Do all the things. If you like the show, like the show, subscribe, tell your friends about it, write a letter to your mom, let her know about the show. All right. Bye bye. Thanks. Thanks bye. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you.